Hello, and welcome to our presentation on cherubism. Cherubism is a rare autosomal dominant bone disease that involves the bilateral enlargement of the mandible or maxilla during childhood. The disease manifests as a painless symmetric replacement of bone with fibrous tissue and gives the appearance as shown to the right. The etiology of the disease comes from a mutation in the SH3BP3 gene in 80% of patients during craniofacial morphogenesis and is typically diagnosed between the ages of 2 and 7. It is more commonly found in males than in females. Clinical findings of cherubism include a rounded face with swollen cheeks due to bilateral enlargement of the mandible and or maxilla. In the case of maxilla involvement, patients will also have upward looking eyes. First signs of disease are usually seen at about two years of age, followed by accelerated growth from eight to nine, and spontaneous regression on the time of skeletal maturity. Despite what one might think about the appearance, patients typically have an absence of pain. Patients may have cervical and or sub submandibular lymphadenopathies along with dental manifestations. Cherubism is characterized by bilateral, well-defined, multiocular radiolucent areas within the jaw bones. Lesions manifest in the body of the maxilla and mandible after starting at the mandibular angle. Involvement in the maxilla is less frequent and less severe than in the mandible. The telltale signs of cherubism include expansive bone remodeling, cortex thinning, scalloping, and disruption showing as multiocular radiolucencies with a coarse trabecular pattern. The lesions may cause abnormal patterns of teeth eruption as well as teeth agenesis, premature loss of deciduous teeth, and the presence of ectopic or retained teeth. It is also very common to see widening of the alveolar ridges. Similar to cherubism, central giant cell granuloma, or CGCG, a fibrous dysplasia and basal nevus syndrome can also cause enlargement of the cranial bones and reveal similar radiographic presentations. There is debate on whether central giant cell granuloma is a benign neoplastic lesion or a reactive lesion. It is present more commonly in the mandible and is an intraosseous lesion composed of cellular fibrous tissue, multinucleated giant cells, and trabecular bone with multiple foci or hemorrhage. It is most often diagnosed in children and young adults with a slight predilection for females. Radiographically, the borders may be well defined in a slow growing lesion or poorly defined in a more aggressive lesion. Lesions are radiolucent and some may contain septations resulting in a multiocular appearance. Central giant cell granuloma has a strong tendency to expand bone borders and displace anatomic structures. As a result, teeth are often displaced and root resorption often noted with loss of lamina dura. Although the radiographic appearance of cherubism are similar to central giant cell granuloma, cherubism is bilateral with an epicenter in the posterior mandible and maxilla, while central giant cell granuloma is a unilateral lesion with epicenters usually located more anterior in comparison. The most consistent differentiating feature of fibrous dysplasia is that fibrous dysplasia is unilateral, whereas cherubism is bilateral. Fibrous dysplasia is also genetically distinct from cherubism in that fibrous dysplasia is a mutation of the GNAS1 gene, while cherubism is associated with the mutation in the SH3BP2 gene. There are two main types of fibrous dysplasia, monostotic and polyostotic. Monostotic fibrous dysplasia most often affects the jaw and is usually associated with older age groups. Fibrous dysplasia can also affect other parts of the skeleton, such as the proximal femur, tibia, humerus, and ribs. Radiographically, fibrous dysplasia presents with a ground glass appearance or orange peel appearance, representing the delicate trabeculae. It may cause displacement of teeth, interfere with eruption pattern, and contribute to malocclusion. Cortical thinning and ridge expansion are also noted. Basal cell nevus syndrome, also referred to as Gorlin syndrome, is an autosomal dominant inheritance of the PTCH1 gene. Patients with basal ne cell nevus often begin by developing basal cell carcinoma during childhood or early adulthood. Basal cell nevus typically presents as multiple odontogenic keratocysts, which are benign tumors of the jaw. Odontogenic keratocysts and basal cell nevus exhibit very little expansion and typically respect the borders of the jaw differing from patients diagnosed with cherubism who do experience jaw expansion. Patients with basal cell nevus often find depressions or pits in the palms of their hands and soles of the feet, as well as macrocephaly and skeletal abnormalities of the spine, ribs, or skull. 
Treatment of cherubism is meant to be an ongoing process and is recommended that a craniofacial team monitor the patient annually to check for new cysts as well as establish cysts. Surgery to remove severe cases is typically done with curettage and recontouring of the bone and is typically done only once the disease becomes quiescent or if severe functional problems arise. Orthodontic treatment is also an option for these patients as there are successful case studies that show the successful alignment of upper anterior teeth even in the presence of root resorption. Below listed are the references used in making of this presentation as well as the image citations. We hope you enjoyed this presentation on cherubism.